Well, God bless you. Listen, this is Pastor Ray. I am so honored and delighted to have you to turn this way. And we're getting ready to carry you into a message that I preached not very long ago. I think it will bless you, your household, and your family. God moves in such mysterious ways as wonders are to perform. I want to carry in and let you listen to this message. We'll be back a little later. Let's go into church. Verse 16, and I will pray the Father that he may send another comforter, that he may abide with us forever. Verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Verse 13, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Thank you so much. I want to talk about a good way to pray. A good way to pray. Help me say a good way to pray. I have baffled a while over John 14 because of so many holy, helpful hints and so many promises that the Lord promised that he would do in this place. Because in John 14, 2, he promises us a new house in my father's house of many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And then he promised a return and I will come again and receive you unto myself. And John 14, 9, he promised that we would know the Father. He said, because you have to understand that nobody really know God the Father, but God the Son. But he says to us in verse 9, when you see me, you see the Father. Meaning if I'm going to write God the Father a letter, I will send it to God the Son because they reside at the same place. And John 14, 12 is somewhat baffling because he says, greater work you shall do than what I have done. How is it that I will be able and you will be able to do more work than what Jesus has already done. Because to be honest, there is no one like Jesus. It is amazing about Jesus. Jesus never wrote a book. And yet more books have been written about him than any one person on the planet. Jesus never built a church. But more churches have been erected in the name of Jesus than any other person I know. Jesus never went to school and yet he baffled the minds of professors. And there have been schools that have been built across the nation in honor of Jesus. Jesus only traveled 120 miles in his life 
And yet people travel across the globe talking about the man named Jesus. How can we do greater works than what Jesus has done? Jesus does not talk in reference to our power or wrought in miracles, but this is on the spiritual level, whereas Jesus was limited to 120 miles. He has given us access to travel the globe, to tell a dying world that he died one Friday and got up Sunday morning with all power in his hand. Jesus, during his lifetime, only a few people came into the saving knowledge of Jesus. For you remember that even when he died, his church had only 120 members. But in Acts chapter 3, when Peter, Acts chapter 2, when he preached that powerful message, 3,000 souls were added that day. And the church grew, as the apostle Peter said, daily, as the Lord saw fit. My goodness, the number is so numerous now until no man can number the number of saints that's in the body of Christ. When we get ready to go to heaven, they say there's already a hundred million voice choir that's waiting to sing. And that's just the choir. And so he says that you will do greater work. But then he moved into verse 13. And whatsoever, which is a broad invitation. I don't know anyone will extend an invitation that broad to say whatsoever. You shall ask because most of us can get extravagant when it comes to asking about certain things. I don't want to get too deep in this passage, but I want to be deep enough to explain the text so at least you can carry it home with you and make it portable so you can share it with someone else. The little word acts, I want to hang there about five or ten minutes if I can without putting you to sleep. A-S-K, it's a small word, but this little word has a lot to do with how we get our prayers answered by God. Because Matthew 7 and 7 says, Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. If you take the A off the word ask, the S off the word seek, K off the word knock, you'll still have the little word ask. There are a number of words, and I've shared with you many times that the Bible was written in its original Hebrew and Greek languages. In the English language, there are only 6,000 words. In the Hebrew and Greek languages, there are 12,000 words. And when the translator translated 12,000 in the 6,000, he had to duplicate some words, meaning that some words spell the same way but have different meanings. For instance, the little word acts in the Greek text, there are at least six words, seven words, in the original language just for the little word acts. Lego is one of the words for the word acts. It means to break the silence. That you notice sometimes when we pray, we pray with our mouths closed. Matter of fact, at our national convention sitting, there was a, a person in charge of the worship service called a preacher from the flow to come to the platform to pray for our national convention. 20,000 people were sitting there. He walked up to the mic, bowed his head, stood there a moment, and then walked out. And the preacher sitting next to me was representing the Smart Alec Committee. <laughs> Caught him by the hand and said, they asked you to pray. And he responded by saying, I did. Yeah, yeah. They said, but didn't nobody hear you? 
He said, I wasn't praying to y'all. That many times we expect others, we expect to hear them, but you don't always have to hear a person when they pray. But every once in a while, the Lord himself want to hear you. In other words, he wants you to break the silence. He's so serious about you breaking the silence when you pray until if you don't, sometime he will drop something heavy on you. And when he drops something heavy on you, you will break the silence. If it's nothing but hip law, if it's nothing but mercy. You can't tell me you won't break the silence. If things get heavy enough, you will holler out for mercy. But then there was another word for the word acts is deima in the Greek. It means to beg God. And most of us sooner or later will get to the point where we will start begging God for something. You see, when you beg God, you know God got what you need and you want to know if he really hear you. And so you will keep going back to God over and over and over again until God respond to your prayer. I've explained it this way, that God don't answer our prayer always at the point where we ask him to answer it. God do our prayers like an eagle will do when he see a Simon fish swimming down the river. He looked for in the distance, he's sitting on a dead limb. He spot the fish a hundred yards away. He fly toward the fish. He don't chase after him. He aim not where the fish is, but where the fish is going to be once he fly a hundred yards. He dive down and pick him up and bring him back to his place where he will have his eating and meal. God, when he get ready to answer our prayer, he don't answer it where you are. He answers your prayer many times where you're going to be. When he get through taking you through the stuff, he got to take you through. Because when he get ready to answer you now, you may not receive what God have for you. But when God get through flipping you and turning you around and turning you up inside out, when God gets through with you, you will know how to answer the prayer right. I watch football. I don't pay much attention, but I do know that when the quarterback throw the ball, most of the times he don't throw the ball where the runner is. He throw the ball where the runner is going to be. Y'all don't hear me. God answer our prayer where we are going to be. That's why we spend time begging God. And if God don't answer your prayer the first time, pray again. If he don't answer the second time, pray again. If he don't answer the third time, pray again. If he don't answer the fourth time, pray again. It's not that God is hard of hearing. It's many times we're hard of listening. But then that's another word for the word acts is spoon thodomai. In the Greek it means to question God. In other words, I get to the place where I take God through an examination process by placing my resume on the altar. You see, too many times when we pray to God, we pray based upon who we think we are. In other words, I go to God, so listen, I'm the superintendent of Sunday school. I'm the president of the choir. I've been in church 40 years. I pay my tithes. Talk to me, somebody. My mama knew the Lord. My daddy was a deacon that you're praying the wrong way because you don't have nothing to offer God. We have to go to God empty-handed 
talk to me somebody and not question him about his answer but be willing to receive the answer God have for us. Sometimes God answer us by not answering us. In other words, he don't give you what you want. He give you what you need. Sometimes the stuff you think you need, you don't need it. And some of the stuff you think you don't need, that's exactly what you need. <laughs> Y'all not here. Then there's another word, epiateo in the Greek. For the word acts, it means put demands on God. That means I tell God how long I'm going to wait on him. And if God don't cover up and come to my rescue, I'm going to put matters in my own hand. I need to tell you, you cannot, you can't impress God. Talk to me, somebody. And you can't put God back up against the wall. God will never panic under pressure. The reason he won't panic under pressure is because he's God. And God can do whatever God want to do whenever God get ready to do it. Y'all don't hear me here. I mean, if, if you are better than God, let me ask you a few questions. How high is up? How low is down? How far is around? Where do the light go? Where do the light hide when the darkness occurs? What corner do the storm reside in? <laughs> Talk to me, son. Who wrote the lyrics for the mockingbird? Yo, don't hear me in this house. If you better than God, tell me these questions. We have to wait on God to respond. I forgot to tell y'all the quieter y'all are, the long I'll preach. But then there is another word for the word acts, and that's the word in the text. It is a teo. A teo means an inferior talking to a superior. Meaning every time I go to God, I need to recognize that I am inferior and God is superior. I can't act like I'm on the same level with God. I must learn how to humble myself. I must approach God with a humble spirit, saying, God, I'm dust and you are divine. He said, whatsoever you shall ask in my name. Now, We've done it all our lives. We think that the name is a little magic wand. That I just ask for what I want, and then I stamp his name at the end of it. It doesn't work that way. No, no, it doesn't work, but you just stamp in his name at the end and expect to get what you want from God. There's several schools of thoughts, and I rush through them and let you go. One is, you remember the episode of Moses when he was in Egypt. And God says to Moses, go down and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses said, now Lord, sir, I, I don't mind going. He said, but number one, I can't talk that well. It, 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 it's going to be hard to explain to them my purpose for coming. So I need to know, who shall I say send me? God says, tell them I am. He said, okay, that's okay. He said, but you know, African Americans, they don't just have one name. They got at least two names. What's your last name? He said, if they ask for a last name, tell them I am that I am. Talk to me, somebody. He said, now, he said, now do, I, do I need to carry any weapons? You got a gun I can carry? He said, carry your rod. And so Moses went down to carry, to speak, and tell Pharaoh, God said, let my people go. 
And then the magicians came and the magicians threw their rods on the ground and they turned to snakes. Moses threw his rod on the ground. It became a snake. But then Moses picked his rod back up. It turned again after they caught it. <laughs> Y'all get that out why? Because when Moses saw it was a snake, he was getting out of there. God's hold it, Moses. Don't run. Just pick your rod up. Pick it up and turn it into a snake. And it ate up the other rods. Now, the rod represented the authority of God. Y'all not here. It represented God's authority. The name of Jesus represent the authority of God. Now Moses wasn't any more powerful than anybody else, but he had the right stuff with him. We don't have anything going for us other than having the right name with us. And that's the name of Jesus. Shout the name of Jesus. Second school of thought of this name is when a couple get married. It just so happened in America culture, whenever a couple will get married, the woman's name hide behind the man's name. For instance, if his name is Robinson and her name is Jane, well, when they get married, it's Mr. and Mrs. Robinson. Are y'all here? It's no more Jameson, it's Robin, shout Robinson. He hide, she hide behind his name, but also mean that she can be flat broke. She don't have to have a dime at all. No credit cards, no money in her account, no real estate, no livestock. Yeah. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all might be quiet, so when you do that, you have to cut across the corner. Ain't got no weave. Y'all made me go there. She ain't got nothing. And yet, Mr. Robinson have credit cards, cars and cash, clothes, commodities, creature comforts, got a Caribbean Cruz got a huge cottage in the country when Miss Jamison meet Mr. Robinson and they leave the altar. Now she got credit cards, cash, clothes, commodities because the name stands for that. But now if she go back to Jamison, don't expect to carry what she had because she lose it all with the name. Another school of thought is that when you travel or if you have to go to the court of law and you can't be there yourself, you get an attorney and give the attorney power of attorney. And so when the attorney get to court, even though you're not there, the attorney has your authority to speak in your behalf. Well, when we get the name of Jesus, God give us the authority to speak in the name. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That means the name of Jesus represent the power of God. But when I use the name, I have to renounce my name. I can no longer hold on to my name because I'm using the Lord's name. Too many times we want to hold on to his name and hang on to our name. But your name has to be dismissed. Y'all don't hear me. In order to use his name. Am I, am I going too fast for y'all or too slow? It, you, you have to recognize that the power is in Hit me, say, the name. Whatsoever you shall ask in my 
name. That. Notice. He didn't say. He didn't say you ask for one thing and get something else. He said whatever you ask for. That. Will I do. Now here's the question. Why is it. I have been asking. For stuff from God. And been putting a name on the end and ain't been getting nothing. Why is it that I've been getting on my knees? Saying, Lord, I need you to do this for me. And I end my prayer in the name of Jesus, and I still got the problem. Here it is. Whatever I do. Whatever I ask for, I have to make sure the glory belong to God. You see, if I ask God for a promotion on my job, is God going to get anything out of it? Am I asking for the promotion just to get me some more money? Have I considered paying God a dime first? If I ask God to bless me with a new car, am I going to come to church more regular? Am I going to help pick up somebody else ain't got no transportation? If I ask God for a bigger house, well, God bless you. Listen, we're out of time, but you see, we're certainly not out of message. I hope you've been blessed while listening to just a portion of this message. I think the message will be a blessing to your household. Just order this message, 1-800-375-4007, or you can write to the God is Good Ministry, 2237 South Parkway, East Memphis, Tennessee, Zip 38114 or go to God is Good Ministry. Love for you to check us out. Be blessed. Yeah.